It is soccer night in Madison, Wisconsin, where forward Madison will host FC Tucson here tonight from Bree Stevens Field in this week 19 USL League One matchup. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Josh Eastern here on ESPN Plus. The flock making their way inside Bree Stevens Field. Should be another great crowd on hand tonight in what is a big game in terms of playoff implications, the USL League One standings. We take a look at him here. Madison coming in off their big midweek win over Toronto in fourth place, holding down that last spot. FC Tucson just two points below them. So it should be a very interesting match between these two sides tonight and the rest of USL League One. This is the last match in week 19. So we will get to see how it all shakes out at the end of the night. But when we look at forward Madison, their attack has been very good, especially in the past two matches. 27 shots, 11 on target. They scored four matches, or excuse me, four goals in that match against Toronto on Wednesday. Daryl Shore says this attacking group is multifaceted. You have guys like JC Banks, Paolo Jr., and Don Smart. And while Don Smart hasn't scored in the past few games, it's been JC Banks and Paolo Jr. stepping up. And the guy who will be trying to stop them tonight is Kyle Venter, but he has been scoring goals of his own. Four goals on this season, including one last Saturday against Chattanooga and against Madison in their previous matchup. He's also very efficient in front of goal. Six shots and four of them have gone in, and he heads up a back line that has conceded less than a goal a game this season. So it should be a dynamic matchup tonight. A lot on the line in terms of playoffs. When these two teams met on June 15th, it was a 2-1 win for Ford Madison. But now, can FC Tucson get back? We'll be right back on ESPN+. Plus. Back here at Bree Stevens Field in Madison. The team's taking it to the pitch tonight. It'll be Tucson in their road whites, and it'll be Madison in their home blues. Finally back wearing the color blue at home. Let's take a look at the starting lineups tonight. We'll start with the home team forward, Madison. One change to the lineup from Wednesday's 4-1 win over Toronto FC2, and it comes in goal. Brian Silvestre back in for his first start since the Tormenta match just about a month ago on July 6th. Aside from that, a couple players getting over some nicks from the midweek, and they are back in the lineup, and it is the same field players for Madison that have seen the field the past couple of matches. 
That is Daryl Shores 11 on the other side for Coach Darren Sawatsky and FC Tucson coming off that 1-1 draw at Chattanooga. Four changes to the lineup, the same back line, a different goalkeeper though today. It'll be Carlos Marancio and up top, Ben Spencer making his second start coming down from Phoenix Rising where he has a goal in nine appearances. And Devin Jamga, definitely a player to watch for FC Tucson tonight. And Darren Sawatsky, those four changes. You saw the flock walking into the stadium and all of a sudden the skies opened up, but it was a quick moving weather system and it is a beautiful night once again in Madison for some soccer as the teams get ready to go. Always a good atmosphere at Reese Stevens Field. 4,000 fans at every single match. We'll get into more of League One attendance coming up at halftime later today. We have an exciting 45 minutes to start things off here in the first half. A whole lot on the line tonight. The head referees, you can see him there. Jonathan Belinsky. He will be the man in the middle tonight. Lock already getting going. You can hear them in the background. They'll be making noise all night long. So Madison is in a big home stand right now. Got FC Tucson here tonight. Followed up with a home match against the Richmond Kickers before two more home matches to close out the month of August. A trip to Greenville sandwiched in there. Ben Spencer standing over it. There's Andrew Wheeler Aminu. The whistle blows were underway from Bree Stevens Field in Madison, Wisconsin. FC Tucson and Ford Madison on a beautiful Saturday night in Madison, Wisconsin. FC Tucson coming off that 1-1 draw with Chattanooga when talking with Coach Darren Sawatsky this week. He said it's a hard place to go and find a point, but they did that. Kyle Venter scored 53 seconds in. But Chattanooga's been in good form, so it's good to get something out of that match. Chattanooga equalized later on. So Tucson coming away with that 1-1 draw. And they are in the midst of six straight road games right at the midway point. But as you can see, they're unbeaten in their last four matches. Two wins and two draws. Madison will be looking to hand them a loss. And I'm talking with Daryl Shore this week in that match against Toronto. He said it was a good start. They rewarded themselves with a late first half goal. And they had a good second half after some, some details were addressed at halftime. Up ahead to Oliver White. It's cleared away. Josiel Nunez will come and chase it. So Tehran is there, and he takes it right away from Nunez. Something Daryl Shore was stressing this week was this, that, that result on Thursday, excuse me, Wednesday, means nothing if they don't follow it up with something here tonight, and three points, definitely a must for them. As they continue to try and get into that playoff picture, they come in in fourth place tonight. The live standings though, Chattanooga jumps them with a nil-nil draw currently with North Texas, but aside from that, Tonight, a very big matchup in terms of playoff implications. Daryl Shore talks about six pointers. This is definitely one of them. Here's Jose Tehran now. A couple of Minnesota United Lonies into the side tonight. Wyatt Omsberg and Carter Manley who have been with the team for a good portion of this season. The only change though, Brian Silvestre is slotting into goal. Dane St. Clair not in the 18 here tonight. Ramon Howell now. All the way downfield, Brian Silvestre his first touch. Talking with Daryl Shore about the last matchup between these two sides and things really changed right away when Paolo Jr. scored a goal 45 seconds in, the fastest goal in USL League One history. But Daryl Shore says for about the past, or the, the last half hour of that match, Tucson bossed them around a little bit. 
we're talking about forward Madison. So looking to get out on the front foot, another good start. Be big for forward Madison. That's always something that Daryl Shore stresses is getting out on the front foot, getting a good start, getting an early goal if possible. Last week against Orlando at home, it was tough going for forward Madison for a while. So many chances, but eventually they found that one goal. Had a few disallowed goals, a missed penalty. They were finally able to put one in the back of the net. And the captain armband tonight is Kyle Venter. Talked about him in the pregame. His 14th start here tonight for Darren Sawatsky and FC Tucson. Manley now. Find Oliver White who makes another start tonight for forward Madison. Required on loan right at the beginning of July from Memphis 901 FC in the USL Championship. There's Jamga trying to get it inside the box. And Don Smart now comes away with it. Wheeler Minu all over on the foul. Quite the road trip though for FC Tucson. Their fourth match of six. Brings them to Madison. Upcoming, it doesn't get much easier at North Texas and at Tormenta. Points have been at a premium, but they've had a good run of four games. Starting at the end of, excuse me, at the beginning of July with that 3-1 win over Toronto. They have followed it up, a win with a draw each time in that four game stretch. They had a draw last Saturday, so maybe expect a win tonight if you can follow the pattern there. To run now for Devin Jamga. A foot race and a good tackle by Wyatt Omsberg. Coming here on the near side for the left back, Jose Toron. Now Lamar Batista, the big center back. On loan from LAFC. And attempt this long throw here, trying to get one into the box early. Bounced around in the box. Comes to Toron. An acrobatic kick. Looking for Ben Spencer. We'll go out for the first corner kick of the match for FC Tucson. That's a looking to go quick. Slow it down is Eric Berga now. Berga has been the set piece specialist, especially with these corner kicks. Be an in swinger here from this near side. Actually goes out of play. Lord Madison looking to play out of the back. Don Smart takes a deflection, will be a throw in for FC Tucson. Lord Madison has been getting some important wins, but especially away from home. Four points out of a possible six in their road matches. At Toronto is Devin Jamga, a bit of a heavy touch. Let's go past the end line, a goal kick. But a four out of a possible six points in Toronto for forward Madison. About as good as anybody has done this season up there. Also gotten a win at Tormenta, the first road team to come in and steal all three points down in Statesboro. So they have good wins on the road. 
have to be able to follow it up with home wins. And Daryl Shore mentioned that and it's great to win at home. It's really great to win anytime. If you get a win on the road, you have to be able to back it up at home where it should be at least a little bit more in your favor. You don't have to travel and sleep in your own bed. Here's Ramon Howell now. Now Ramon Howell, some space to run. Switches the field, looking for Etsy Tavares. He'll be able to keep it in play. Tavares across in, punched away by Silvestre. And now Don Smart. Don Smart looking for Oliver White. Just out of the reach, maybe he'll get back on it. And that was deflected back to Carlos Marancio. Marancio made his debut back in June against OCB as we take a look at this cross into the box by Etsy Tavares, but punched away by Brian Silvestre. And Josiel Nunez on it for forward Madison. Taken away here by Jamga. All the way in, and then Eric Leonard is able to clear it away. The throwing now upcoming for FC Tucson. This match, this opening 10 minutes has been the Tucson attacking half. say they are on the front foot here early. Uleraminu gets inside. The cross in is caught by Silvestre with relative ease. There is that cross again, but Silvestre was there. Big target man is Ben Spencer making his second start. Standing at 6'5", replacing Jordan Jones in the lineup tonight. That one match he played for Tucson this season was on April 30th against Lansing. Also scored for Phoenix Rising, the parent club of FC Tucson, against El Paso earlier this season. Phoenix Rising doing special things for the USL Championship. There's Oliver White, couldn't quite keep his footing. Mentioned the rain shower that came in just prior to kick. You wonder if maybe affecting this turf surface. JC Banks now. Pounded by Vergen. He goes down, JC Banks does. As play continues. Jack Leonard. Up for Wyatt Omsburg. Carter Manley now. See him up and down this right flank all match long. Loves getting the attack. Talking with Daryl Shore about him this week. Really just in Madison to get games on loan from Minnesota United, but trying to catch the eye of Minnesota United. Had a handful of games, eight for them last season. For some more regular football, and he has it here in Madison. Still with an eye on getting up to the big club, Minnesota United and MLS. Good start to the season they have had. Really turned it on as of late in that Western Conference. Mason Toy, who has spent time with forward Madison, has all of a sudden become a goal-scoring machine up for the Loons.
for Christian Diaz. Yellow card tonight for him would see him a one game suspension. Nothing to note here tonight. It's taken away by Tavares. Now Ben Spencer is able to possess. And FC Tucson might have some numbers here. Paolo Jr. tracking back. Eric Leonard as well. Spencer, a spin move, able to keep it. Ramon Howell, big looping cross towards the back post. And Silvestre, no problem for the goalkeeper. Keep it in play and advance it for Oliver White. White trying to get around Batista. Ball goes over the end line and a goal kick. Select is the official ball supplier of USL League One and many of the finest leagues in the world. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. For the latest Select products and special offers, please visit SelectSportAmerica.com. Disciplined side FC Tucson is. The least amount of yellow cards. And after the red card by North Texas recently, now the only team without a red card in USL League One. Christian Diaz, Madison building an attack, the cross blocked. It was out of play, that was off the right back, Luke Hosworth. Christian Diaz, a bit of a heavy touch, he's gonna keep it in, he does, it's Oliver White now. Looking for Don Smart, his shot is blocked. And Tucson able to get out, here's Etsy Tavares. Going to switch the field, but Eric Leonard wouldn't let that happen. Lobo, one of the RSL Academy as well. Prior to his time now in Tucson. Up for Ben Spencer, his shot. Looking for that back post, goes well wide. And some space to potentially get free, but Connor Toadman was right there with him. Here's Connor Tobin wearing the captain's armband once again for forward Madison. Nunez now, bit of a heavy touch as the ball deflects out of play. Stay with Madison. JC Banks. Looking for Christian Diaz on that left side for forward Madison. But Luke Hosworth denies him. The ball deflects out of play. Hosworth, a four year starter at the University of Washington from nearby Woodbury, Minnesota. Hosworth looking to put this ball back in play, making his 12th start tonight. gets taken down by Leonard. And that is a yellow card issued to Eric Leonard. First of the night issued by Jonathan Belinsky. It's 
Spencer is still down. by the trainer. The yellow card is going to be for Madison FC number three, Eric Leonard, in the 19th minute. Take a look at this again. Leonard coming in from that right side. High boot there, going right into the midsection of Ben Spencer, but he is back on his feet. Spencer has spent Season in Norway, made stops at TFC2 and Indy 11. Coming to Phoenix Rising and now FC Tucson. Talking with Darren Sawatsky, this was maybe prior to the previous matchup between these two sides. And you now FC Tucson wants to play in their style. And he said at the time, that was in mid June, end of May. So we're trying to almost replicate the style of Phoenix Rising, gaining more time on the ball. And we're implementing it pretty slowly, but they've fully gotten up to speed. And at this point, they are really trying to mirror exactly what Phoenix Rising is doing in the USL Championship. And working for FC, excuse me, for Phoenix Rising is Oliver White, able to get around Batista. Oliver White into the box. Runs right into the back of Lamar Batista. The whistle blows for a foul as Batista went tumbling down. At first it was a slip by Batista, but he was able to get back in the play. And ultimately, put the foul call in his favor. Follow forward Madison and the rest of the USL League One all season long on ESPN Plus, home of the USL, MLS, UFC, the US Open Cup, and more. Join the over 2 million sports fans who already discovered ESPN Plus and watch League One live every week. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. Here in the midway point of this first half. Still looking for the first real opportunity for either of these sides. Some half chances either way. Shots, one apiece, no shots on goal. So remember back to the first matchup, it only took 45 seconds for Madison to score in that matchup on June the 15th here at Bree Stevens Field. By Carter Manley. Oliver White, but Lamar Batista there to it again, and will run all the way back to Carlos Marencia. Deflect out for a corner. Coming here for FC Tucson. Second one of the match, and once again will be Eric Bergen, this time an outswinger upcoming. Bergen Rennies to send it in. High ball towards the back post, looking for Spencer. Back into the middle, Batista comes away with it, shot deflected, and a great save by forward Madison. Took a few deflections in the box and finally cleared. That's the first good opportunity for either side. Madison able to escape. Leonard now, it's taken away by Jamga to play in Howell, but it goes out for a goal kick. Go back to that chance just a moment ago. Off the corner, there's that high corner in from Eric Bergen, headed back into the middle. Eventually fell to Batista, actually looked like it came off the arm or hand there of Eric Leonard. Batista was asking for it. And eventually it was 
Brian Silvestre to make the save, but Moore Madison might have just escaped there. Might have been a harsh hand ball call, but it definitely deflected off of the elbow area of Eric Leonard. And we continue, it's still nil-nil. Also very tough for Jonathan Belinsky to see at that speed. Not really sure what it deflected off at first, but on that replay you could definitely see it came off in his hand. Now you can go into whether it was an unnatural position all the way through the rule book. You are at home to side. A few, a, a few people slip on this field so far tonight. Rain shower came in a little bit before, but aside from that, a pretty nice night for soccer. Now Josiel Nunez. We'll find another blue jersey. He gets swarmed by white jerseys. Now it's not smart. Back for Nunez. Smart again. We'll look to keep it in play. It's deflected out by Batista. And a corner kick up coming for forward Madison right in front of the flock end. There's a look at the flock end. Don Smart there on the foreground. Sends it into the back post. Headed on. It took a deflection in there, and then it's off the post! And finally cleared away, only as far as Nunez. Ford Madison asking for a handball, and they will get it. But nearly an opportunity there for Ford Madison. The ball's just deflecting around both boxes. Like that was Wyatt Omsberg, and hit the post. And here was the handball by Jamga. Josiel Nunez stands over this free kick. Good opportunity. Will he take this on himself? As Tucson sets up the wall. Nunez with three goals this season. Josiel Nunez, he takes it on. And he misses high. Will Madison starting to turn on the attack a little bit. Needed by that corner and not for the left post, Ford Madison could be in front 1-0, and I guess if it weren't for the deflection on the other side, FC Tucson could also have a 1-0 advantage. This game comes to life a little bit. Bergen puts it down. It's the ball rolling again. Kyle Venture now. Connor Tobin headed out of play. Throw in now coming for FC Tucson. It will be Luke Hosworth to come off to take this throw in. now looking for Tavares. Can't get by Christian Diaz. Hello Junior and now Christian Diaz again. And it looks like Bergen caught the forearm of Paolo Junior. Referee Jonathan Belinsky will bring play back. This will be a free kick and a dangerous opportunity for FC Tucson. Over White pleading his case and now Belinsky talking with Paolo Junior. I think that was a good call by the referee. Off 10 yards. We'll see what the decision is here for FC Tucson. A bit of a tight angle there on that right side. Once again, it will be Eric Bergen. No in swinger here. So they look to put one in. You remember, Kyle Venture, the center back, four goals this season. And one of them, though, was a header. Definitely some targets in there for Bergen to look at. He sends it in. And it's headed off the line by Omsberg. Batista got his head to it, but Omsberg guarding that near post keeps Tucson off the scoreboard. So 
twice tonight. FC Tucson have been very close to finding that opening goal, but both times they've been denied. And take a look at it again. Batista has, definite, has a definite height advantage over Eric Leonard there, but Wyatt Oxberg on the line and able to make the save. Eric Leonard at 5'9", and Omar Batista at 6'5". Batista will come and throw it in now. Center back duos in this match already coming up very important on both sides. Wyatt Omsberg has nearly found a goal, and Omar Batista has nearly found a goal, and Omsberg denies him on the other side. Long ball in now. Headed up in the air, but right at Brian Silvestre. Here's the center back, Kyle Venter. Back in the all black kit for Brian Silvestre. We saw Dane St. Clair for that pink goalkeeper kit. Last home match, making its debut. Back to the normal threads tonight for forward Madison. Humsburg now for Oliver White, goes out of play. Rowan coming for forward Madison. Both these teams know what's going on in the standings. Diaz keeps it in play. Talking with Daryl Shore, he said the playoffs have already started for us. We put ourselves in a bit of a hole early on. We don't make excuses for what happened, but we have some ground to make up. They've done that very well here in the past few weeks, gotten into a playoff position coming into today. On the other side, for FC Tucson, a bit of a different look at things and saying we're just concentrating on the game in front of us. The players know the standings, but the concentration is on Madison. This is from Darren Sawatsky. Every game so important coming down the stretch. We're now into August. There's about two months left in the season. Some teams just about 10 matches left. A whole lot of moving and shaking to come, but for FC Tucson, they've really been in a similar position from weeks 13 to 17. They have sat between sixth and eighth place. Come into tonight. A log jam at 23 points, two below the playoff line. Mencio is able to clear it away. Through the first half hour from Bree Stevens Field, still no score between FC Tucson forward Madison for spending part of your Saturday night with us wherever you are watching from. Hunter Tobin now with Nunez. Nunez will take this on. Marancio down to his left, able to make the save. Marancio out of Hermosillo, Mexico. Came up in the Monarcas Morelia. Academy in League MX. Tucson looking to get back into that playoff position. It's been a while for them. Jamga, this one is cleared and might have gone out of the stadium. And if it did, it went out of the street. on this near side for FC Tucson. Jose Turan. Bergen now. 
for Jamga. Cross in, headed away by Connor Tobin. Still in the area. Finally goes out of play. Two teams have traded some punches here in the past few minutes. Now it's FC Tucson back on the attack. Another soccer ball might have just gone on to East Washington. Right behind our camera position. FC Tucson, no stranger to winning on the road. They're tied for the most road wins in USL League One with three. Two of those have come at Orlando. The other one came at Greenville and it was a very impressive win, putting three goals past Dallas J and Greenville Triumph, one of the best defenses in all of USL League One. And Tormenta. The ball played in. Christian Diaz is there to it. Ramanu is looking for Enti Tavares. Ramon Howell now. Flip forward. Go out of play. Another goal kick upcoming for forward Madison. Looking for the latest USL League One news and content. Follow at USL League One on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for exclusive access and updates. Here's Wyatt Omsberg. Rain is starting to pick up again with Madison. And it's taking for cover. Rick Leonard now. It's away from Ben Spencer. Here's Omsberg. Pressure being shown. On FC Tucson, this ball is played all the way back. sorts of weather this season at Bree Stevens Field. Of course, the first match is played in a blizzard as it's now played forward for Ben Spencer. Once again, it will roll past the end line, a goal kick. Closing in on halftime here in Madison. Still looking for that opening goal. The opening goal has been so important to both of these teams this season in terms of playing from in front or playing from behind. Big swings in what their records are when they score first or concede first. Carter Manley now into the box, looking for Oliver White, but he couldn't direct it on frame. And once again, Carter Manley creating something down the right side. Daryl Shaw really had a lot of nice things to say about Carter Manley as we take another look at this. Just finding space in Oliver White. Knows he had a good opportunity there. Daryl Shaw thinks he might have gotten robbed of an own, of an own goal at Toronto on Wednesday. Take a look at the film again, but pretty close. It was eventually ruled an own goal, but Carter is here to get games. It's important that his confidence grows while he is here, and boy, he has been such a spark to this team whenever he has been in the starting 11. He just gives Ford Madison another player along with Christian Diaz that just helped them get into the attack with their outside backs. He's a good engine, a good ball in knows when to get forward. He also needs to know when to go forward and when to stay back with his defensive responsibilities. And a giveaway there at the back, but Ryan Omsberg was on it. Still, Etsy Tavares able to come away with it. Gets around Leonard. What is a yellow card tonight? Connor Tobin kicks it away and finds Don Smart. A 
Madison scrambling in defense, and maybe another giveaway there, and yes, it is. A number of those now from forward Madison. The two main pieces from Minnesota United have been Carter Manley and Wyatt Omsberg, and it's important both of them come in with a good attitude, and both of them have really had a good attitude. And Enjoy being around the team. They've been around for Madison quite a bit this season and looking to get games and make an impact and definitely have done just that down the right side of that back line for Ford Madison. for Ben Spencer. Now Paolo Jr. is trying to start an attack for Josiel Nunez now. Oliver White, to get it back to Nunez. It's a forward for Don Smart. He brings it down. And eventually it's cleared out for a throwing. Good defensive play there by FC Tucson. Full voice. Just looking around the stadium, so many different soccer jerseys in various places. And of course, you see those Ford Madison kits as well, those pink ones. You see all over the place in the crowd. Madison, a city that is really come to love Ford Madison. Great soccer town. USL League One. Ball to flex out for a corner. He's maybe looking to take this short. Smart is there. And Nunez hits the near post. And it's cleared away. Diaz now. Looking for Don Smart. And here's Eric Bergen. There's a Tehran there on the overlapping run. We keep it in play Only for that moment. All the fans have taken for the covered areas at Bruce Stevens Field. The rain has subsided, at least for the moment. And J.C. Banks. Rosiel Nunez. And it's Christian Diaz. Banks able to gain possession back for Ford Madison. Makes a spin move, gets through a few defenders. For Jose Tehran, comes in and commits the foul. JC Banks making things happen once again for Ford Madison. Also somebody we talked to, Daryl Shore, about this week. They did a tough start to the season. His father passed away, he wasn't playing in his normal position, but now he is back in his more of attacking role. He's gotten on the score sheet four times this season in his normal role. He's really flourished, and especially as of late for Ford Madison. Scored against Orlando last week. That was the goal that was the difference. Already seen this similar free kick earlier. Josio Nunez stands over it again. And it's the same result, it's wide. Hey, 
Nicholas Marencio now. Ready to put it back in play. Tucson looking to come forward. Wyatt Omsberg eventually comes away with it. Here's J.C. Banks again for Josiel Nunez. Gets it wide for Don Smart. Don Smart towards the back post. Oh, what a goal from Don Smart. And forward Madison take the lead. Oh, my, such a pretty goal from the Jamaican. Call him the king from Kingston, and boy, what a crown on that one. Such a tight angle, but able to curl it into the side netting. Don Smart thumbs up, and what a goal for forward Madison as they have taken the lead here just before halftime. His seventh goal on the season, and Starting to get into that golden boot race once again. They've been quiet as of late. We talked to Daryl Shore about that. Other guys stepping up. The leading goal scorer has kind of gone quiet, but boy, he has made his presence felt once again. Just a tremendous goal from Don Smart. Now it's up to FC Tucson to respond as Etienne Tavares couldn't quite get by Christian Diaz. And we are into the one minute of additional stoppage time. Just before halftime, Don Smart has changed the complexion of this one. Jose Turan takes it out of play. Etienne Tavares hopping on one of his ankles after going up for a header, and yes, he is down. Make it a little bit extra for that one minute. Might be able to get back onto his feet without the trainer. And forward Madison scores first. They have not lost. They're 5-0-1. Tucson concedes first. 1-5-2. Changing the complexion of how this game could play out. Lord Madison looking to get all three points here tonight, and it's the same for FC Tucson. He asked Darren Sawatsky if he could change one thing from the last time, what would he do? And it said, basically, just let's get all three points this time around. So Oliver White now. Right back to FC Tucson. Good gamesmanship there from forward Madison. We are nearing halftime here at Bree Stevens Field. Maybe one more attack for FC Tucson. For ben Spencer. the whistle and we have hit halftime here for Bree Stevens Field but Don Smart providing a moment of brilliance to put Madison up ahead going into halftime and it's now FC Tucson who will need to find that equalizer in the second 45 see what the team talks are from either side but it is halftime. We'll be right back to take you around USL League One right after this.
Back here at Bree Stevens Field, forward Madison getting a goal just before halftime from Don Smart. And FC Tucson looking for that equalizer as we get into halftime here and looking at the attendance in USL League One. And it has really been headed up by Ford Madison, averaging over 4,000 fans a match, the only team in USL League One to do that. They also set the attendance record a few weeks back, but they take a look at this as you're trying to grow a league, very important that you get fans in the stadium and the top five right here, all over 2,000. And that's very important as this league tries to grow in its inaugural season. But it was Ford Madison setting the record and every match has just been a huge crowd. The flock has really bought into Ford Madison what they're trying to do. 4,536 came to their match a few weeks ago setting that single game attendance mark. They also had 4,800 fans for a friendly match against Minnesota United when they came at the end of June. But they have made it a fortress of Bree Stevens Field, and it is also very important that you protect your home field. And just a beautiful setting in Madison for some soccer. This was during their friendly against the Mexican side that came up. As you take a look at it, just under 2,000 fans, the average attendance. But it's forward Madison, and, and that, that last bullet point really stands out, ranking 18th out of 45 USL Championship sides, along with USL League One as, as well. They have really built something in Madison. And the fans keep coming out when they are giving away watermelons for National Watermelon Day. They're coming up with a bunch of cool stuff to give away at the games. It always makes it exciting. Celebrating National Flamingo Day a few weeks ago as well. They always make it an event in Madison, Wisconsin. So it's halftime at Bree Stevens Field. Let's go check out what's going on around USL. Now get some time, Sam Warren and a beauty. From distance on the way and in. Go Las Vegas Lights. And Taylor with a beautiful strike. Are you kidding? Yeah, we'll go for goal. It's part of the community. I, I think it's not a mistake that you drive anywhere in the city and you'll see the, you know, the Red Kickers K. I was certainly honored to play for the club and, and understand it's just a part of the city. We're the, the longest continuously run professional soccer team in the country, which is, is pretty cool. We have Charleston Battery beat by one day. We played on a Friday night in 93. They played on a Saturday. We take great pride in that. There's a really good structure in place and there has been a really good structure in place for a long time now, even from when I was back here as a youth player. The coaching staff, the, the culture, the way things are done at the kickers um, is, is at the highest level. Everyone's committed, everyone's 100% in. We have a really strong locker room and everybody really wants to do well for the club and, and they believe in me and believe in the club and respect the history that we have as a club. So um, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far, uh, just kind of getting this group together. <laughs> there at the Richmond Kickers. They'll be in Madison next weekend to take on forward Madison. But now let's get you around USL League One. Update you with some news and notes from the past week. All roads lead to the final. 
a new USL League One final that will take place in October. The top four teams will make the playoffs, and whoever's the highest seed left will get to host that match. Also, the USL updates. USL League Two final is currently going on in Flint, Michigan with Reading United against Flint City. The USL Academy League also created to start that path to pro. And then the player of the week, Tyler Polak getting two assists in Greenville's big win at North Texas. And player of the week to player of the month. Well, here are your selections here. Tyler Polak is one of them. Jordan Jones as well. Two goals in the month of July. Some pretty good choices here. Connor Antley as well won the first player of the month award way back in eight, March and April. Go on to USLLeagueOne.com and cast your vote for one of these five gentlemen. The upcoming schedule here in USL League One. Another busy week. Four games next weekend starting on Friday in Toronto. Greenville will pay Toronto FC two a visit for three more games on Saturday as FC Tucson will travel to North Texas in a late night match under the lights in Frisco. And now let's take a look at the standings. Very, very important coming into tonight. This is how they are. Forward Madison. Right there in fourth place with Chattanooga. Lansing Ignite getting a big win against Orlando tonight as well. So a whole lot of moving and shaking to happen. Greenville Triumph also up on Tormenta. And the game is very late in the second half. You can watch that game on ESPN+. Plus. You can watch all of USL League One on ESPN+. Plus. So one more break before highlights and stats on the other side along with the second half right here on ESPN+. Plus. Nearing the start of the second half here at Bree Stevens Field in Madison Ford. Madison leading 1-0. And now let's show you how that happened with our Metro family, Kia and Ford of Madison highlights. Looking at the first half. An exciting first half it was. Some chances on both sides. Brian Silvestre getting in the act early on, but there were a couple chances that were saved off the line. Ben Spencer was trying to get in. Couldn't quite direct that one on frame. But FC Tucson would keep on coming forward, looking for that opening goal. And this was one of the best opportunities of the first half. Coming out to Lamar Batista and it hit off the arm and then the leg of Eric Leonard and then Brian Silvestre. Maybe a question of a handball here. You be the judge on that one. But it stayed out. And then on the other side, it was Wyatt Omsberg hitting his own teammate. J.C. Banks in there, and then it clangs off the left post. As Ford Madison couldn't quite get one in, and then this one saved off the line by Wyatt Omsberg on the header by Lamar Batista. The center backs really having something to do in the attack. And then Carter Manley looking for Oliver White, couldn't quite direct it inside that near post. But 
Ford Madison would keep on coming forward. That man in the foreground right there, number seven, Don Smart, would have a lot to say about it right here in just a tremendous curling effort towards that far post, upper 90. Just a great goal by Don Smart, and I'm sure you'll see that one in the goal of the week. Voting this upcoming week on USLLeague1.com. The team's coming back out onto the pitch here for this second half. It's up to forward Madison to close things out. They will try to close this one out at home and get second win just as many wins over FC Tucson. Let's take a look at that. They have been scoring a ton, Ford Madison has, and they have just one loss in the last eight games. That started starting with the FC Tucson match back in the middle of June, and Ford Madison has outscored opponents 17 to nine during those eight matches, so they've really been able to put the ball in the back of the net and get on the winning track as well. Getting set here for the second half. The teams will switch sides. JC Banks stands over it. He asked Darren Sawatsky, if there's something you want to change from the last time in Madison, it was to come away with three points. Well, FC Tucson will have to play from behind if they want to head back home with three points. A quick foul and like a quick yellow card to Oliver White here. Very quick here in this second half. So going to issue the yellow card. Jonathan Belinsky waiting just a moment, and there it is to Oliver White. Second forward Madison player into the book tonight, Eric Leonard, got one in the 18th minute. Venter and White still talking, and we'll see a lot more of each other as this match continues. Captain and center back, Kyle Venter. He scored a late goal for FC Tucson in that match on June 15th. But it was when they were down 2-0, and it was basically the last touch of the game. So Madison's able to win it back in the midfield. Carter Manley. It's wide for Christian Diaz now. Ball goes out of play. Eti Tavares is asking for it, and he does get it. Ball played over the top, headed away. This Tucson team, a very interesting mix of experienced players and very young players as well. You have a player like Etsy Tavares, who has played for the Tulsa Roughnecks, Real Monarchs as well. Kyle Venter, who's been on numerous clubs. We also have a player like Lamar Batista, who is on loan from LAFC, a young player as well. At 22 years old. Then you have players from Phoenix Rising as well. Coming down to get some minutes. Just a few miles south there from Phoenix is Tucson. But not in the lineup tonight is Philip Ejimadu. Goalkeeper on loan. The ball's played through for Oliver White. And it's Carlos Marancio off his line and able to get to it just in front of Oliver White. Eric Leonard now. 
Rosiel Nunez able to work in some very tight spaces. Interesting to see if number 25 right there, Ben Spencer for FC Tucson can get into this match a little bit more than he has. A big frame at 6'5". Spent some time with Phoenix, but talked with Darren Sawatsky about him. He says he has good feet, brings good leadership, and another attacking option. He's familiar with this squad. He's played a match with them earlier this season at, at the end of April against Lansing. They're excited to have him, and FC Tucson likes those big hold-up number nine strikers. Jordan Jones he spent a lot of time, and we saw him at halftime. You can vote for him for Player of the Month in July. We'll see how Spencer can impact things in this second half, as Tucson will be chasing equalizing goal and maybe even a second if they can get it. We've talked with Darren Sawatsky in the past. He says everything's about player development right now and we don't develop for draws. We develop to go win games and earlier this season against Richmond he said he maybe made some attacking substitutions to go for all three points and we were level at the time and could have gotten out of Richmond with a point the longest road trips in USL League One and put on an attacking option and it didn't really work out for them. They came away with a loss, but I'd rather go for the win than try to play for the draw. So we'll see how that plays out tonight. With about 40 minutes plus stoppage time remaining. Eric Vergen now. Again, you see the style of play of FC Tucson. Phoenix rising. They gain a lot of time on the ball. Phoenix rising, but able to do this season. I think short of remarkable 11 straight wins for them. Switch of the field now, looking for Antti Tavares against Christian Diaz, takes it to the end line. A clean tackle and a goal kick coming for Ford Madison. A nice play by Christian Diaz. We'll put it back in play. A lot of experience in between the pipes, no matter who it is. Whether it's Brian Silvestre, Brian Coulter, even Dane St. Clair, who very good. He won a national championship in Maryland. Here's Etty Tavares now, cross in. He's looking for Ben Spencer, who's lost his footing now a few times tonight. That big 6-5 frame. Now Jose Tehran will take it on, and it's blocked. Carter Manley getting in the way. Ball goes out of play for a throw-in. Spaniard will put it back in play. Tehran scored his lone goal of the season. It's Orlando City B. Shown by Josiel Nunez. There's Eric Bergen. Here 
Kyle Venter say that. Restart it. A leader on the field for FC Tucson. And the captain's armband. For Jose Tehran once again, but Carter Manley is there to it first. the Duke product. Josiel Nunez, some fancy footwork, but it looks like he might have just caught an FC Tucson player with a high boot. Jonathan Belinsky spotted it. to be able to catch little glimpses of what these players are saying on the pitch. Really here, Kyle Venter, very vocal. Watch the MLS All-Star game, it's pretty cool to see all of those players mic'd up. A lot of communication, That's something Daryl Shore stressed. The communication needs to be good. We talked about that last week against Orlando. Trying to connect the play back to front. Looks like we have a substitution upcoming, and it will be for FC Tucson. Jamel Cox will come on. Eti Tavares will make way. Jamel Cox from Tacoma, Washington. Played on was really good Sounders under 23 sides. That's where Darren Sawatsky coached as well. There's some familiarity between these two, Sawatsky and Cox. He also Played for the Tacoma Stars indoor soccer team up there just south of Seattle. A lot of experience for Cox. Good attacking presence as well. Two goals and two assists. See how he can impact his second half. Fans of the USL and build its elite youth platform, USL Academy. This allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth and compete at the highest level across the United States, including the USL Academy Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com forward slash academy. Banks looking to find some space for Paolo Jr. He was falling down a bit too heavy. One sub used by Darren Sawatsky in FC Tucson. See who Daryl Shore and Ford Madison turn to. Ryan Beeman came off the bench on Wednesday against Toronto and scored a goal. Danny Tenori, if you want an attacking player. John Russell and Louis Bennett. Maybe if you want a more defensive-minded player along with Ali Hamas and Ganzi, so plenty of options. Well, Daryl Shore on the other side for FC Tucson. Need more attack. Zach Wright, Guillermo Delgado. And Stripling there as well. See how this next half hour or so shake, shakes out. Big impact on the USL League One standings as well. It was Greenville Triumph to come away with a big 1-0 victory over Tormenta tonight. Jake Keegan scoring that goal in the first half. Connor Tobin will clear it away. Lansing Ignite also getting a very important win, 3-0 over Orlando City B at home. team like Lansing that has played so many more games than everybody else in USL League One aside from Orlando. It's really important that they start stringing some wins together because teams could just start passing them. And all, and it all shakes out and evens out on the first weekend in October. And Madison will take a trip to Lansing to close out the season and that could have playoff implications written all over it.
Tucson. Six of their final seven matches will be at home after this six game road trip. Continues next week at North Texas and then concludes against Tormenta. And JC Banks went down and you saw him almost do the splits there. That looked good for JC Banks. Holding that right leg, trying to get back to his feet. Let's take a look at what's coming up for FC Tucson. Play the top two teams in the league coming up in the next two weeks. And then it's a little bit easier, although no game is easy in USL League One, but playing Orlando City B. Last place team, a new coach, Berto Sibaja. And a yellow card issued to Ben Spencer. The travel is something that really doesn't phase FC Tucson at this point. There's a lone team out west. It's just something that they've had to adapt to, and Darren Sawatsky hasn't really brought it up a whole lot. Just concentrated on what they need to do, and it all evens itself out because FC Tucson has all these teams come to their place as well. The last match between these two sides will come September 27th in Tucson. Ford Madison still has to pay Tucson a visit. Kino Sports Complex right at the end of the season. Yellow card to Ben Spencer, the first yellow card for FC Tucson tonight. I should mention, FC Tucson, a league low, 23 yellow cards coming in, so that being number 24. And so I ask you a very disciplined side, and pick one up there. Josiel Nunez gets pushed down, and this should be a free kick for forward Madison. Only two games final so far tonight in USL League One play. That Chattanooga North Texas game went into a weather delay, and they're still going on. About a half hour left here, and a free kick now for Josiel Nunez to take. It's not just a one-man wall, it's Eric Bergen. Here's Nunez, looking to take this on. It's punched away by Marazio. Only as far as Connor Tobin now. Hanley looking for Don Smart, the goal scorer. His shot deflected behind. Corner kick now for Ford Madison. The assist on that Don Smart goal, 44th minute going to Josiel Nunez. So that is his third assist. Third assist for Josiel Nunez. for those technical difficulties. Here's the corner kick now for forward Madison. Jonathan Golinski blowing his whistle. Still talking things out. Conversation brewing between Paolo Jr. and Eric Vergen as well. Take it short. Here's Carter Manley. Headed away by Jamga. We haven't called his name a whole lot so far. All the way 
back now for Carter Manley. Ryan Silvestre will clear it. Looking for Don Smart, unable to win that foot race. Here is Devin Jamga. He is the go-to man in terms of goals this season for FC Tucson. Team leading five goals, making his 13th start. He's from Zimbabwe. Stand out at SIU Edwardsville. But here's J.C. Banks looking to get a shot off. It's blocked. It's like Wheeler Aminu was there. Sawatsky calls Devin Jamga a downhill runner, supreme athlete. He also says he's getting better technically and scored two goals against Greenville a few weeks ago. And that is not an easy task. We'll see another clean sheet here tonight against Tormenta. It was Greenville. This ball goes out of play once again. Cosworth will put this back in play. And a giveaway there. Josiel Nunez takes the shot. Once again, cleared away for another throw in. Gordon Madison putting the pressure on. Bergen comes away with it. Now trying to advance it downfield. Connor Tobin had it back for Brian Silvestre. Brian Silvestre puts it back in. Tucson still looking. That equalizing goal while Ford Madison can maybe find the game sealer and make it 2 0. Well, remember, Madison has not lost this season when they've scored first. Don Smart. Don Smart trying to get around Batista. They both go to ground. Referee Jonathan Belinsky waves it away. And Sengers a throw in there on that far side. Looks like both of them were going at it. Don Smart asking for a jersey tug. And in the meantime, we'll get a substitution. Substitution will be Guillermo Delgado coming on, and it will be Ben Spencer heading off. Delgado coming in with two goals and one assist. Spaniard out of Madrid. Spent one season in the Sounders U23 side under Darren Sawatsky. It is college soccer at the University of Delaware. There's a cross in. Cleared away. Now Nunez on the volley. Sends it into the fan zone just behind their attacking goal. And now Carlos Marancio looking for a new ball. Fans follow forward. Madison, the rest of USL League One all season long on ESPN Plus. Home of the USL, MLS, UFC, the US Open Cup, and more. Join the over 2 million sports fans who have already discovered ESPN Plus and watch League One live every week. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. That was Marancio clearing the ball back into the stands. It's 
last week against Orlando where the goalkeeper, Christian Herrera, was not making friends with the Madison fans. And I'm sure Carlos Marancio endearing himself just as much. Wheeler Amanu. Now Tehran. Jamga now. Howell. Here's Vergen. That's making it very tough to break down right now. Here's Jamel Cox. Good tackle by J.C. Banks, wins it back. And here comes forward Madison. Josiel Nunez looking to counter. Hollisworth was there to it, now a foot race, and he wins it. Gives it right back. Looks like a substitution readying there on that far side. It looks like that is number 77, Jiro Bariga Toyama. He will come on and he will replace Oliver White. Very versatile Jiro Bariga Toyama. The left sided player will come on here for Forward Madison as they look to close things out here. Potentially come away with a second straight 1 0 win at home. Here's Cox, he takes it right out of play. So if, the, if Madison can hold on in his next 20 minutes, it boosts him up to 25 points. Or excuse me, 28 points. They came in it tonight with 25 points. FC Tucson with 23. It's one of those six pointers some of the coaches have talked about this season. They're playing teams directly involved in the playoff hunt. And both of these teams are coming in, just two points separating them. Still 20 minutes left, plenty of time for FC Tucson to find an equalizer. Bariga Toyama, first touch of the ball. Being held by Vergen. Advantage was being played, it looked like, for the moment. Jonathan Belinsky will bring the play back. Taken by Nunez, the far side for Manley. Good touch to get free of Jamga. Here comes FC Tucson, Wheeler Amanu. Trying to chase it, it's Ramon Howell, but it's taken away by Christian Diaz. Stepping through some players and finding his teammate Nunez. Showing off the footwork, Christian Diaz, we've seen that a few times this season. Now here's Carter Manley. Good last ditch defending by both of these sides. Making it difficult to get shots off and really create chances. 11 shots for forward Madison, just four for the road side. Here's Jamga, finding Tehran. Now it's Eric Bergen. Down the left side, looking for Delgado. He's not able to keep it in play. Who's up, who's down, where does your club sit? Find out every Monday in the official USL League One Power Rankings only on uslleagueone.com.
can let you know, Chattanooga has taken a 1-0 lead over North Texas, a Stephen Beattie penalty. And the Red Wolves right now up on the leaders of USL League One in North Texas. They've been in a bit of a funk lately and see Tucson might be catching them at the right time next week. Tobin will put it back in play for Madison. Looking for Don Smart, if he can keep it in play, he can. His cross, looking for Nunez. It's cleared by Batista. Oh, it goes out of play. Good header there by that fan to keep it on the field. You can hear that in the background from the PA announcer. 4,350 fans in attendance tonight for Forward Madison. As the flag goes up there on the far side, Don Smart caught in an offside position. And a yellow card issued to Josiel Nunez. I would think that is for descent. So Nunez now finds himself in the book. Leonard, White, and Nunez for forward Madison of yellow cards. On the other side, it's Ben Spencer. The only FC Tucson player to have picked one up. Bit of a rarity. minutes left plus stoppage time. FC Tucson still looking for that equalizing goal. The attendance, once again, very good for Ford Madison. The average attendance will rise just by a little bit. Cosworth. Tucson looking to gain some possession and trying to build forward, but Ford Madison not making it easy. Long diagonal switch. This ball will run over that far touch line. Jr. wins the ball back for Ford Madison. Now here's Jiro Bariga Toyama. Knox in hot pursuit. Bariga Toyama, double teamed, able to get out of it for the meantime. Gets pushed down and a foul. Calling on Jamel Cox. Jiro Bariga Toyama doing the tough work, the dirty work on this near side, winning a free kick for Ford Madison that I'm sure there will be in no rush to take. But it will be Josiel Nunez to come and stand over this. Yeah. 
Nunez places it down. Here it is. The in swinger. Marancio has to push it over the crossbar. And now a corner kick coming for forward Madison. Don Smart now to take. Come close already once tonight. Here it is again. Cleared away by Venter. Manley heads it back in. Nunez was offside. And we will get another substitution. Marancio wanted to go quickly. But the substitution will be made. So coming on will be Zaire Bartley for forward Madison. Well, Zach Wright will come on and he will be the last sub for FC Tucson. Sounds like it's right in for Jamga. And there's Bartley in for Paolo Jr. Zach Wright making his 14th appearance here tonight. North Carolina. Zaire Bartley making his sixth appearance. Zach Wright has a goal and an assist this season. Three attack minded substitutions have been used by Darren Sawatsky as they chase this equalizing goal, but right quickly in the game and quickly fouling Jiro Briga Toyama. Fun fact about Zaire Bartley is he actually scored the first goal in forward Madison history. He came against Indy 11 in a preseason friendly and in Rockford, Illinois. Josiel Nunez splits the double team. Find some space, looking for Don Smart. It's taken away by Wheeler Amanu. Riga Toyama's been very active since coming on. Bosworth for Vergen. Ramon Howell now. Is there a twist to this tail in the latter stages? Fifteen minutes of matches. FC Tucson have scored just two goals. We're talking about 15 minute segments in the match. It's the second least amount of goals scored in a segment. In the first 15 minutes, they've only scored one. It's that 45 to 60 range right after halftime where they have eight goals. Now ball played forward. Ford Madison will put this back in play. Now 
Eric Leonard. Eric Leonard able to keep it. He takes on a shot. Looking for that near post. Carlos Morencio had it covered. Six minutes plus stoppage time left for FC Tucson to find an equalizer. Here's JC Banks now. For that long diagonal ball for Don Smart. That was Marancio off his line. And we're gonna get it rolling again for FC Tucson. now trying to get away from Banks said he wins a throw in there's Eric Bergen Goes wide now. Cross in, looking for Tehran. The shot goes well wide. Now here's Zach Wright. And it's deflected out. He just saw that stat pop out of the scoreboard. Gordon Madison has not lost. They're 7 0 0 when leading with five minutes left. A shot taken on, saved by Silvestre. Tucson not going away without a fight. To forward Madison now to see this match out. Take another look at it. There's Luke Hosworth. Some pace behind it. Now Lamar Batista. For that long throw in. It's out of the way by Mamley. Cox keeps it, and Banks will clear it. And maybe Zaire Bartley can run into it, but Jose Turan wins the race to it. It's Morancio off his line. Jose Nunez caught in an offside position. FC Tucson has to be careful and cognizant, throwing numbers forward and leaving them exposed at the back. I think at this point, they have no other choice but to throw all their numbers forward. They get out with at least a point. Delgado, Tobin slides in and clears it away. The ball into the street once again. Wheeler Amanu. Luke Hosworth, long cross. Zaire Bartley. Another look at that foul. It's Bartley colliding with Vergen. Free kick coming on now for FC Tucson. Cox will take it. Looking for Venter, the header goes wide. Sylvester had that tracked all the way. Two minutes plus stoppage time left. Madison looking for all three points. FC Tucson, maybe at this point, just looking to get out of Madison with a point. And there is the final sub of the match for either side. It will be Louis Bennett, the Shorewood, Wisconsin native. And he'll be replacing Josiel Nunez, who's put in a good shift tonight for forward Madison. Bennett played at Marquette under his father, is on loan. 
from Memphis 901. Continues to come down. It's been off and on throughout the night. See it up there in the lights. Here's Carter Manley. He's willing to take some time off the clock by clearing it back downfield. Bergen has some options. Here's Zach Wright, low cross, cleared away by Amsberg. Nearing stoppage time, the flock in full voice, trying to help their team see this match out. Here's an FC Tucson corner. Right into the middle, nope, it goes right out of play. Not a good corner there by Eric Vergen. There will be four minutes of stoppage time upcoming. We're at the end of this match. There is the official word, a minimum of four minutes. Silvestre taking his time. Shiribariga Toyama. Trying to get it wide. Slips on the wet surface. Ball goes out of play. There's Wheeler Amanu coming forward, but Carter Manley, a heads up play to cut that pass out. Flipped forward for Don Smart, but out of play. Downfield. That's Brian Silvestre who can fall on it. Lord Madison looking for their second clean sheet in as many home matches. Their third overall. Throw in now as we're just past the midway point here of stoppage time. Carter Manley will take the slow walk over. Amsberg win it for forward Madison. Now here's Louis Bennett. Louis Bennett, a shot saved by Marancio. And he'll get up quickly and distribute. Louis Bennett still looking for his first forward Madison goal. And Lamar Batista into the attack. A center back coming forward, a cross in, headed away by Tobin. Don Smart able to win it after the header by Louis Bennett. Now it's deflected out for a throw in and I'm sure they'll be in no rush to take this. Zach Wright will come over and fetch the ball. So 
right now, Ford Madison. Looks like they'll hold down their fourth place spot. Still a few seconds left and a free kick now upcoming for FC Tucson. Most likely the last opportunity of the match. And JC Banks into the box with a yellow card. Up next for Ford Madison, Richmond will come to town. Up next for FC Tucson, a trip to North Texas. But first, one last opportunity. So we're past the minimum of four minutes. Cox sends it in. Silvestri off his line, he makes the catch. And there's the final whistle. Forward Madison, all three points at home. A 1-0 win, and the goal from Don Smart in the 44th minute stands. It finishes, Forward Madison one, FC Tucson nil. A tough, tough loss for FC Tucson. And this one has to feel really good for that man right there in the middle, Daryl Shore and Forward Madison. They capture all three points here at home. And another win for Ford Madison as they just keep their roll going. Now their fourth straight win. We'll take one last break. We'll come back to wrap things up here from Bree Stevens Field. A lot of happy fans at Bree Stevens Field tonight. Forward Madison capture a 1-0 win over FC Tucson. It was Don Smart's goal that was the difference. So let's check out how this all went down. It's an exciting night. You can see the watermelon being raised there in the air by the flock. National Watermelon Day celebration at Bree Stevens Field. But here was the moment that provided the difference for Forward Madison. It was Don Smart. And boy, what a goal. Upper 90, top corner, side netting, a beautiful curling effort. And it finds the back of the net, and that's all Madison needed tonight because their defense was stellar. They still had a few more chances coming forward. It was Oliver White there trying to get on the end of a Carter Manley pass. But overall, a very good night for forward Madison. They got their goal just like they got last week against Orlando at home. They were able to come away with the victory. They had a number of set-piece opportunities. Josiel Nunez stood over most of them. Carlos Marencio was good in goal tonight, aside from the one moment where he probably just couldn't stop it. It was such a good shot there from Don Smart. And once again, Marencio being tested. A few more chances would come for FC Tucson, but nothing too serious aside from that one Clearance off the line by Wyatt Omsberg back in the first half. But aside from that, 
It was forward Madison's match, and they were able to come away with all three points tonight. That was another good opportunity from Luke Hosworth, a bullet right at Bryant Silvestre, but he was able to push it to the side. Here are the final stats from a rainy Madison, Wisconsin. 12 shots to forward Madison. They didn't have much of the possession, but they didn't really need it. They just had that one goal. Four yellow cards, though, for forward Madison, but aside from that, got to be pleased with this result, pushing them up to 28 points. And they remain in fourth place, even though Chattanooga is holding a 1-0 lead over a 10-man North Texas. So that is going to do it tonight from Bree Stevens Field in Madison. A happy night if you're a Flamingo fan. All of the flock end in full voice all night long. But it was Don Smart's goal in the 44th minute that provided the difference. And that is going to do it. All three points for Ford Madison. Thanks for watching for our entire crew. I'm Josh Eastern. Have a good night. Or it finishes Madison 1, FC Tucson 0. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One. Back post! Oh, what a... For Josie on Nunez. Gets it wide for Don Smart. Don Smart towards the back post! Oh, what a goal from Don Smart! And forward Madison takes...